take a pleasure to introduce our guest today, our guest speaker. Let me uh, please let me express my uh, gratitude to all of you, and let me express my gratitude to all of our industrial engineering department family, to the instructors, to the assistants, and to the students, hardworking students. Welcome everyone. Uh, today our guest speaker uh, is here to tell us in person. Uh, how he was able to grow in his career path and uh, from research assistant to his head of marketing department uh, and the worldwide companies, worldwide food companies. He will tell us about his career experience, about his uh, different insights and solutions related to this subject. Twelve years ago, he started his career in uh, GFK Turkey in Istanbul as a research assistant executive in international um, unit in Istanbul. And today he is operating as a head, as a manager of marketing department, um, dealing with the wide range of food products, uh, portfolio in Urkia and uh, Yildiz Holdings and also Badiva Company. So, as you know, everyone knows that these companies, they are GRs, they are tops of the um, companies' units in the food marketing um, industry. So, during his career, he developed his uh, part of, he developed his, during his career, he developed his part uh, as a, at the Ulker uh, company, as a senior assistant brand manager uh, of culinary and tea departments. Also, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce his numerous awards and bronze EFI, Golden EFI awards in Turkey. He, he has obtained bronze oval in uh, Turkish research uh, associations. To promote his first professional and personal skills, uh, he was attending varying, uh, various events such as, for example, sweets and snacks exhibitions in Germany in 2020, also Digital Advice Lab Academy and also Canal Slides International Festival in 2016. I would like to highlight that he, is, uh, he has been a student in our Industrial Engineering Department uh, for his bachelor degree and also he continued further his education as a master's student uh, in Business Administration in Kadir Haas University. So, dear gentle, ladies and gentlemen, dear students, welcome Mr. Ahmed Nejmeh-Dinesh. Thank you so much for the great introduction. I humbly listen to all your kind words. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ahmed Nejmeh-Dinesh. Uh, my friends and family calls me Nejmeh. And today I'll be talking about uh, how to become a marketing a professional in food industry with you. So, Ms. Mink, you want us to introduce this lady? Yes, I'll introduce her particularly. <laughs> she has a slide for this. So oh. that's <laughs> uh, today I'll be mentioning about who I am and about uh, what marketing is in my perspective. And today, as of, uh, as of today, uh, I'm in e-commerce uh, division of uh, my company. I'll talk about how uh, it grows and how what I'm doing there, and some humble notes for the future. So, I think this is the same place in here, and you may see me right here. It was like 12 years ago, but uh, the job is still the same. I didn't do anything. Uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> still the same. As in, as in, uh, come more. Right yes. And it was I was right there and I'm here right now. Believe me, it's like a cycle. Uh, and I believe that you guys all can be here if you want. If you miss Cyprus, if you miss your uh, university college days, you'll be when you'll be here. And I I was a great student. Just uh, first of all, I want to say that. But Kukunaja, uh, he was always supportive about us, all of us, and all of our other instructors. I was playing basketball in the university team. And uh, for the time being, uh, courses are not uh, as going as I expected. But I will mention about that later. Today, I still play basketball in corporate basketball league. And my wife, 
she's right here with us today and uh, right now we are plus one she is expecting hopefully in uh, July uh, I got a twin sister and I like to spend time with my co-workers and my friends and I always try to make career progress as something fun that's why I believe I'm going in a kind of a good path and I, I hope that you guys do the same and as is already instructed, uh, I'm working at uh, Turkey's leading uh, food company, Yildi Yildi owns uh, Godiva Mekpiz and Ülker brands. And many of you, I don't know if you, whether if you are Turkish or not, uh, probably you know some of these brands. And uh, right now, Yildi is the world's second biggest biscuit company and the seventh biggest chocolate company. And it generates uh, operations in many different categories uh, around food industry. So, uh, well rooted, uh, huge company, and I'm proud to work for like nine years now. Which means, who is the leading company in the world? Uh, actually, it depends, but uh, Mars is so powerful uh, right now, Nestle is so powerful, and it depends on the categories they own, so it changes. But for the biscuits and chocolates, we set our place for a long time. So, about my career, I'll just mention between these times. My, first of all, my CGPA was 232 when I was graduating. Oh, 37. 37. <laughs> <laughs> he knows better than me, he knows all of your grades. Thank you, Hussan. And I, I hated uh, physics courses. I hated mechanical engineering courses. Uh, I dropped thermodynamics one or two times. I uh, failed from mechanics one or two times. Uh, I finished school in four and a half years, but believe, but believe me, believe me, it was like, like a, a half of me. It was so, it was so hard. I, but I knew that I, but it showed me something. I knew that I can. Uh, if I don't like something or if I can't do something, there should be probably something that I can do and I can learn. This, this made me realize uh, industrial engineering is a discipline uh, and it has two main variations uh, for the future. Uh, in that time, uh, I mostly remember that I finished the school in a four and a half years, but I needed to make one summer school. Uh, it was just, I was a little bit uh, good in English, uh, that's why I finished uh, English school in a half semester, So, but the rest is the same as you guys. Uh, right now I'm going to say something, but you guys may not like it. Do not hurry about finishing school. School uh, ends eventually. But the thing is that uh, in that time, what is important most that you need to find what your values are, you need to find what you are good at, you need to uh, find, find out what you want to do in the future and this kind of stuff is really important because until the end of my third year I wasn't planning for my future I was just about thinking uh, to party, to play basketball, to hang out with my friends and till the senior year I wasn't planning about what I'm going to do but in the meantime we had uh, compulsory trainings you need to go to a factory and you need to write a report and bring it back at the end of the summer. I made two in the factories. Uh, one was a tractor factory, I yes, and one was a software company. Uh, when I went to a <laughs> tractor factory, I found out that I don't want to spend all of my life in the factory. Because factories are out of town, it's hard to go and come back. Uh, you don't get socialized as much as you want and I'm kind of extra person so uh, I thought that if I can spend all of my life in the factory what I can do so I started to look into it I found out that industrial engineers uh, works as a white color in many different disciplines so I found out that marketing would be a good one but when I made this decision it was really late for me because in between 2010 and 2012 I was just rushing to find out what I'm going to do and that's why I attended, attended to an MBA program 
but it was uh, it was kind of wrong decision for me because it's my kind of a tip for you guys. If you want to be in industry, if you want to be in business, uh, do not hurry to make an MBA because MBA uh, helps you when you found out what the business culture is and what how the business goes. When you find out kind of things, then you should do an MBA to uplift your uh, skills. Before you know, and you do it, it's all theoretical, and it's just the extension of the university. I did that mistake, but back, back that time I was thinking that uh, I graduated from Cyprus, there should be a bias for me, I cannot find uh, the job I want in Turkey because there are too many good universities, Middle East Technical University, Bolsh University, Istanbul Technical University, etc. I thought that I cannot differentiate myself if I don't do such a thing. Uh, but right now, after 10 years, I don't think that is true uh, as long as you push uh, as you plan. So, it, uh, in the meantime, uh, I made like between 2010 and 2013, I made like 40 or 50 uh, job applications. Uh, maybe none of them, almost none of them were in the industry itself, not in the factory. It was like more, more like uh, marketing jobs, market research jobs and consultancy jobs. But no one was getting back to me at that time. Uh, one day JFK, a research company, called me and I didn't even ap apply for it. Probably uh, they found out about me in the database uh, of any kind of uh, job research uh, website or something. Uh, they said that we are a research com market research company and we are doing market research for marketing teams. And I said, okay, let's try. Eventually, it's a kind of marketing, so maybe I learned something. I did. I started uh, with JFK in 2012. Uh, in these two years, I just did almost nothing, but uh, trying to find out what I need to do. I go to private courses. I read too many books. It was like, what is marketing? What is need to be done to be a marketing professional? And in these times, when I said myself, when I first proud myself about I finished school half a semester earlier, all of my friends were partying in here. Some of them were uh, extended school for half a semester, some of them uh, extended for one year. But in that time, I was the one who uh, sits in a family's house, in my family's house. Uh, alone and they were partying and enjoying and I was getting angry because I, I thought that I did something uh, to travel uh, about myself but it wasn't working so it's frustrating as you can imagine so I, these, I did these uh, uh, hairy these decisions but it helped me somehow let me tell you why in JFK there were a special division for UKAR uh, for Yildiz and they were conducting uh, researches. But I was in a different uh, division. Uh, I was in a diff different division working for healthcare business. But the UKAR guys uh, in JFK liked me so much. I started and finished my MBA. I worked for a year in JFK. Believe me, if you don't want to do something, it's also like a help. Because in one year, when I was working in JFK, I was making too many mistakes. You cannot imagine. I was sending the wrong proposal. I was not. Uh, I was calling the wrong person. I was uh, type, um, emailing to the wrong person. Anyway, I was uh, totally uh, in a bad mood, and I said to myself, I cannot do this job because I don't like it. Because I don't want to do it. And after just totally one year. I go to MBA at night, uh, work for JFK in the daytime, and at the end of 2012, my manager said that I love you so much, you are a perfect character, but you are not into this job, you are not fit into this job, so please quit or we need to uh, fire you. And <laughs> in Turkey, maybe in your country it was the same, uh, the military service is compulsory. So, I decided to go to military service uh, in 2012 uh, and came back at uh, September. Uh, but 
till those uh, two and a half years, I was like, okay, time I have time to think. I know what not to do. So let's go about what to do. And then when I came back, I called the uh, woman in JFK who likes me uh, and asked for uh, support, uh, a job in Ulker. She said, okay, I'll help you. She sent my uh, CV to the uh, marketing manager of Obachai. It was a joint venture back then, a tea company of Ulker. By the way, it's, it's maybe the uh, lowest uh, company Sub company in Ulker back then. It was a small joint venture, they were trying to do something, but they were not that successful. But eventually I was able to go into that company at the holding. This was a huge opportunity for me. And I was always thinking that, okay, there are 22, 23 years old uh, assistant brand managers, and I'm 25 years old and almost no experience. I don't know about marketing, but Somehow I convinced them. But another question occurred that I have competitors who are 22, 23 years old, but I'm 25 years old. So I need to close the gap. How do you close the gap? Try to run as faster, uh, faster uh, from them. I <laughs> kind of uh, exaggerated. And <laughs> after I started UK, uh, things went a little bit faster. Uh, so, let me show you like this. After that, like one and a half years, UKR decided to leave the joint venture and uh, by the networking in the company, I went to culinary business. Bizim uh, Mutfak. Bizim Mutfak is a competitor of the Knorr, the global, uh, Unilever's global brands competitor but it was in our uh, establishment. I worked for one and a half years in Bizimut Fark too. It was, <laughs> it was funny because the time was 2015 and I was burning to do some marketing about youngsters because you, when you see a funny commercial, funny TV ad, you kind of feel in a good mood, right? I don't know, I used to feel it. But I was working for the women, like adult women, the housewives, and these two categories were all about housewives. And I was getting bored a little bit, even if I want to go to marketing so much. And in 2015, uh, by again by the networking, uh, Gaman Candy, uh, marketing director, asked me to join them within the company. And I said that if you made me a manager, then I'll come. Because in here, I was assistant brand manager, then I become senior assistant brand manager and the next should be a brand manager but it was early early for me like as you see it was two and a half years to three years uh, it should be four years normally but I challenged her I, I knew that she needed me uh, I knew, knew that she needs someone who knows the company and gets the work done so I counter proposed and she accepted it so I worked for Gamma Candidates Finally, I had like, oh, okay, I'm going to snacking right now. I'll we'll be uh, making some great ads, uh, great TV commercials, great products. I work for youngsters, which I am already a youngster. Uh, after three years of uh, brand management, brand uh, position as a brand manager in gum category, Onio is one of the brands. Uh, my uh, director uh, promoted to check the business, so. There were a uh, slight uh, hole in the uh, business and they asked me to manage all of the Gaman Candy business without any director and they said that you'll be reporting to chief marketing officer. I, first time I felt that I'm going, some, I'm going to, uh, a little bit faster because after this time I knew that the stress, anxiety and stuff will burn me because I didn't know, I, I wasn't sure if I have enough experience to manage all of it. But I accepted it, of course, because someone asks you for promotion and uh, a bigger responsibility, you should not, you should never say no, by the way. Even if you don't, uh, even if you are sure you can't do it, believe me, somehow you can do it and jump for it. Uh, if you say no once, you will regret for the rest of your life. So then, Please do not uh, reject any kind of 
an opportunity in the business or in the life also uh, for this time. In 2020, uh, the things were going good, but it was uh, four years of gum and candy, and I was getting also bored, uh, and I was looking for opportunities. Then, uh, you guys, have you ever tried these brands? Yes. Yes. It? yes, it is the biggest division of UK, and it is like a crown, let's say. Uh, if you are managing this, then you can manage everything in Turkey, in snacking, in food, your uh, uh, resume, your CV, uh, brights like a diamond, like Rihanna says. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was uh, asking for this category for a while, but they were giving it to me. And after uh, four years, uh, thanks to working directly to the CMO, uh, the guy, the girl who, who manages this category, uh, left the job and I asked for her to give it to me. Firstly, she had some thoughts, she wasn't sure about it, but then she uh, convinced our CEO and then uh, they accepted this. And in 2020, I had my dreams because like it's 2020 and 2013, for seven years, I tried to do this, but it took seven years. Like 2.5 billion Turkish business for hours, and it was like, it's like a 5.5 billion Turkish business in Turkey overall. We we are holding half of the business, 50 percent market share, and the brands, all of the brands are magical. And I was always thinking, if I uh, if I uh, somehow manage these brands, I'll do great things. And I was so ambitious about it. In the meantime. The questions are getting uh, uh, higher because back in, back in that time, my wife, she's right here right now, she said, don't you think that you need to slow down a little bit because you are uh, avoiding your personal life somehow from time to time, you need to uh, spend with your friends and families or you need to spend time for yourself. Okay, of course, we were traveling, traveling a lot before the pandemic. We were partying again, but I was working so hard. And after these times, uh, for the seven years, I did like 10 years of job in seven years, let's say. And okay, I said that, okay, I'll slow down. Uh, after a year managing these brands, I did good stuff, good uh, commercials, good campaigns, good brand strategy things, but I was getting tired, I feel like it. So uh, like seven, eight months ago, I said that I'm planning to quit to my chief marketing officer because I'm so tired. I okay. I was thinking that I'm. I think I'm late for something because I started late to my career. But now I'm going too fast and I'm getting tired about it. I need some time for myself. Maybe I'll make my own company. I'll establish my own company, or I'll uh, uh, rest for a while and then see what happens for the next for my career. And they said that we don't want to lose you. Okay, just work smoother, work smoother, and let's see what's going to happen. I said, okay, I work smoother, and it was a kind of a new era for me. It, things were going smooth, but then <laughs> something else happened. As I already mentioned you, that when the opportunity comes, go for it. Uh, we uh, have, our company have an e-commerce company, which established two years ago and our boss's son is uh, CEO of the company, our biggest uh, CEO son, Murat uh, son, and his uh, general manager called me and we are establishing a marketing department, uh, would you like to uh, manage it? I said, in what position you want to manage it? Because if I uh, have a huge risk uh, to jump into your company, even if it's within the company, I don't uh, want that to be in the same position. <laughs> he said that, what about I, if I make you a head of marketing? What if I make you marketing director? Then of course I'll come, I said. And uh, in March 2020, I passed to our e-commerce uh, company. So I spent like nine years uh, in Yildiz Holding. There are some ups, there are some downs, uh, some self-doubt, 
some uh, achievements, some uh, cheering, but believe me that you'll uh, leave the same thing in your whole career. The point is to stick into your bigger goal and uh, work hard to aim it, that's it. You give the impression that you can leave this position also. Maybe. I, I used to stick uh, my plan so badly, but the thing I learned, and you, I know that you see right now on the Instagram about the hundreds of inspirational quotes, right? Everyone says that dream big, it will come true, you work hard, play hard and stuff. Of course, there are some stereotypes, but it is true. Uh, we need to stick up a plan, but uh, in the sense of logic in my career, you need to know when you need to let, let go. Uh, letting go does not mean that you are giving up. If you let go, you need a new plan. So sometimes the new life gives you plans if you are ready to own it. So that's why I had hard times for last year, but uh, think about right now I'm working uh, less and getting paid more. So. Uh, it's possible. Yeah. But sometimes you need to uh, know uh, or experience it. Uh, I'm telling you all this stuff right now, your story is going to be different. But believe me, at least 70% of your story will be the same. If you are a, if you work hard, if you uh, stick to your plan, you will be the same. So, uh, these are some, just some of the uh, companies, products, brands I managed. Uh, some of them you may see, some of them uh, you may not. But the thing is that I managed almost 20 brands uh, because some of them are uh, tactical brands. They, we don't uh, communicate uh, or we don't uh, invest in them. But uh, it was a good journey. Uh, I launched maybe 50 products, new products. I made more than 15 uh, TV campaigns, uh, huge campaigns. I worked with the celebrities, I worked with the influencers. Uh, but the thing is that when I made this uh, slide, I felt good because from even from the back, uh, from the beginning to back, I always uh, feel good about what I did, what I imagined. First you imagine, and then you fulfill it with data, and then you go for it. Believe me, all of these campaigns, all of these stuff has a science behind it, and I'll mention about it right now. So. Uh, that was my story. Right now, I'll mention a little bit about uh, boring stuff, but <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I call it marketing demo one. It's not like your uh, courses, selected courses or compulsory courses, but it's my kind of marketing. So let's pass on to that. How many of you guys took marketing courses? So this is marketing three o one. <laughs> okay, just uh, okay. Uh, Dan, you don't know anything. This is kind of better for me because only three or four of our friends took that course. And uh, in every marketing course, there is a first sentence that marketing has four P's. It is product, price, place, promotion, uh, and these are the definitions and marketing has six p's done in the modern day it has eight p's done and right now they say that it is uh, it doesn't contain any p's anymore but you need to start from something uh, in the beginning of course and uh, for the product identification selection and development of any product you manage and in the determination of the price price is everything by the way uh, and it's also a science you need to be profitable, you need to be competitive, and you need to uh, make uh, consumers pull your product. Uh, place, place is a distribution channel. You, you cannot sell a high pro price product in a click kiosk, right? Uh, because it should be sell, sold somewhere else in, in a short uh, term. And the promotional strategy. Promotional strategy can be a commercial TV ads, uh, or any kind of digital campaign or uh, in market uh, execution, it could be anything. Then, people, physical evidence, partnership, and process included. But now, I'll mention what I'm doing as a marketing professional in the food industry. Some of them are the same with the P's of the marketing, 
product development, promotion, which is equal to communication, sales and marketing channel, place, profitability, price, market analysis, leadership and coordination, strategy and planning. These are uh, the primary topics that I'm working during my operation, daily operations, let's say. For the product development, I'll, by the way, I'll uh, explain four of these to you today. And for the rest, uh, this is like a general uh, knowledge for all of the business management. That's why I want to mention about four of them. First one is product. Uh, how, how many of you guys in industrial engineering? All of you? Almost all of you. Right now, I remember my courses uh, about uh, production planning. Production planning also, yes, you like production planning, I guess. I like it too. Me, but in real life, it's not like any course. <laughs> because you always have a shortage. You always have a couple of issues. You always have profitability issues. And it's funny that uh, the knowledge back, back then you learn uh, helps you anyway. But as a marketer, believe me, it uh, depends, it's uh, associated with me too. Uh, because if you can't uh, produce it or you can't plan it, uh, you cannot uh, uh, give it to the consumer you know, eventually. So, product, uh, it's, it's a uh, really hard process and it's not easy. From zero to launch, uh, average product development process takes a year. In a, in a best case scenario, it took six months, let's say five months, but uh, everything needs to be ready. And uh, all the packaging and raw materials and stuff uh, comes in one and a half months at least when you order it. Before that, there's some kind of steps. Right now, I'm going to mention about it. First of all, as marketers, we are uh, responsible from giving the uh, future goals of the brand and product, a new product is an essential part of this mission. That's why we need to be sure about uh, a, launching a product that consumers will love because after a six months, eight months, one year of work, if the consumer didn't like the product, then everything is like scrap. For one year uh, work is scrap. Who wants that? Of course, no one. That's why we are starting with the trend analysis. Uh, there are too many uh, big companies, uh, consultant companies that provide trends to us, and we are starting to uh, analyze trend uh, presentations and talking with the consultants. And when we have that, for, for example, like two years ago, we found out that Ruby chocolate, I don't know if you guys have try it before, uh, Ruby chocolate is going to be a trend. We thought that, okay, it's like a fancy, but should we do this? We will do this because it's an expensive kind of chocolate. For Turkish consumer, we are going to mass. We are not going to premium categories. We, as we can, we need to be mainstream. We thought that, okay, we will do this, but uh, in a limited edition because it's an expensive chocolate, if we want to sell it for a long term, then uh, probably we will fail, because consumers will try once, will try twice, but for the third time they wouldn't want to give that kind of money, because they had better options. That's why we just made it like a short term product. It was a kind of a small example about trend analysis. When you see something, if you have spark, even if it will not, will not uh, burn the market, then even uh, then you should try it. Let's say white chocolate. Like five years ago, I don't think that many of you tried white chocolate. It, it was already existed, but no one uh, establishing an investment about it. But we did. I will show you a case about that uh, after a couple of slides. Uh, so traders are key because this is the starting point uh, to. Uh, filter what you need to go for the future. Competitive analysis, uh, as long as you know in the shelf, in the chocolate shelf, there are like hundreds of products and shiny products, there are some wafers, there are some solid chocolates, there are some bars, 
and global and local competitors, you need to find out how to be differentiated from the competition. Maybe sometimes it will be price. We don't expect it to be price because uh, this means that we need to sell for a lower price. But if you have a lower price, you cannot profit about it. So it will be price, it will be taste, it will be packaging, it will be brand character, it will be anything. But you need to find out what should be your differentiation point and for the fine to find out your differentiation point, competitor analysis are the key. Uh, capability assessment, as my friend and I uh, uh, smiled ourselves, when we plan to do some kind of product, we go to our production team and planning team, and I'm saying, we are asking, can we do this? Because R&D has already uh, a prototype for us. We briefed them, they produced a uh, prototype by hand, and we are going to the team that, can you do this? They said that they say that if you do the packaging like this, we can do it. And I said no, I don't want to do this because this is not in a good shape. I just want to do this. That's it. So what it takes to do this? They said that 100 k dollars of investment. If you can convince your uh, CEO, then okay, we can do it. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we were getting lucky because we are going with a, a unique product, and they say that. Oh, I think we can do this without the investment. Let's try it. So they started a project, production uh, teams, uh, investment team, they started a project and they, then they were able to produce this product. Then it's kind of a uh, miracle for us, by the way, because we are doing a mass production and in the mass production you cannot just fit, uh, you cannot just uh, shift to another mold, another shape, another taste. It's hard to and uh, do it. And uh, in the parallel, uh, research and development uh, goes on. The prototypes are getting ready. We are saying that this is too milky, this is too sugary, this is, this, it doesn't look fine uh, in a mold, so let's change the shape. And it goes on iteratively and goes on. Hey, who decides about taste, too sugary or whatever? Uh, primarily and eventually we decide as a marketing team, but in the meantime, these tests are the key because we believe that uh, if it is ready to ask for the consumer, we are preparing like 150 to 200 uh, samples, uh, prototypes made by an ND team by hand, and going to consumer sensor test. We are uh, we had like 30 questions of list and going to the consumer and ask, asking about them. Would you try it? Of course, they try it. And then we are asking them how do you find the sugarness, how do you find the taste, how do you find the uniqueness, how do you find it to differentiate from the market. And they answer the questions. And we had a benchmark score for it. If you, if you have a bowl, it's great then. Uh, if you have a bowl, uh, there are two things that happen. We try to improve the product or we drop it. Uh, some, uh, from time to time, we try to convince our upper management, but if these scores are not high enough uh, of, uh, about the benchmark, then you cannot proceed with the product. So, what about the ages of this group? Turkey, Turkey representation. In, we have a consumer technical insight department in our company, so they do all the technical stuff. Uh, it should be Turkey representation if it is a unique uh, brand like a kids brand, let's say, then it would be like 13 to or uh, 9 to 15 years of age, but even so, it should be uh, 30 representation again. It's a huge process, but we are managing it, we are responsible for it, but uh, inside team, uh, the research team, uh, they do the research. After that, if the product prototype is ready, then we need the design. We need to. Uh, we need our product to say something to the consumer, right? Because uh, we cannot say that this is new. Let's take it. We cannot say that. We need to have this differentiation point. So we write concepts about uh, how the brand should uh, say to what the brand should say to the consumer and what uh, it should be. Uh, let's say. Uh, proposing to the consumer, and 
and after the concept test, if it's okay, we are in parallel, we are going with the design, pricing, profitability, and at the end of the day, it is going to the printing. But when the, all of these steps should be okay before we launch the product. Profit, if you, if you are at above X percent of uh, gross margin, you cannot go for it. If your price is high, much higher, or much uh, lower than your computer, you cannot go with it. If your design uh, is not approved by consumer and by your uh, CEO, then you cannot go for it. If these two tests are not valid, are not uh, okay uh, over the benchmarks, then you cannot go for it. And it's, it's a long process, as I already mentioned before, it took about a year from start to end to this process. And after that, launch operation is a huge thing because how you start will show you how you end up with it. Uh, that's why we go with work with the sales teams and uh, try to encourage them about selling this product to, to the uh, consumer, to the market. Above the line, below the line, I will mention it uh, later. Listing is a key uh, for the huge markets you need to be listed. Listing means that your product is now in this market, in X market. So this thing is an important thing. And also performance reporting. For first three months, it's so important for the launch. Uh, if it shows a good uh, matrix for the market, for the consumer, then we feel uh, okay that uh, this product is going to fit in the market for the future. So just a quick example. Uh, you probably you haven't seen this product yet, but right now it's produced uh, a week ago and within a week it will be in the market. Probably you know the huge Mika uh, chocolates, right? It's in the duty trees and stuff and the huge markets. We did it for Dido brand. Uh, Dido Trio was a hit three years ago when it first launched. It was the first chocolate which combines big tire white chocolate and uh, milky chocolate in one product. It was huge uh, success. It wasn't my product by the way, but huge success. We were aiming to find out how we can uh, leverage this brand and leverage this product. So we made a concept uh, that uh, I already mentioned you. Capability is a key. First, our production department said that, okay, we can make a huge uh, wafer chocolate for you. And I was thinking about some differentiation point for the product because making the same product with like 10 times bigger Okay, it's, it's, it's a good thing, but it's not a great differentiation point. I, uh, I, everyone has a small problem, right? I asked them, what if I can write something different in each uh, layer? They said that we will check into it. And then they come, up, come back uh, to me that 100k Turkish lira investment needed to do that. But 100k Turkish lira is okay for us because in dollar sense it's nothing, of course. And we then generate the concept. Uh, it says with my book, uh, with the loved one, when I get like, with my favorite song, with coffee, when I'm happy. And it's, it's a good concept, eventually. So we made it as a platform, as you can see. Uh, this should be a social connection product. The strategy should be uh, to be around youngsters, to unite them around the product to, share, to make something shareable. Uh, Lifehacker is a concept, uh, a cluster of uh, youngsters which are uh, ambitious and curious about trying new things. And unique design should be an occasion for us. And at the end we said that it would be only digital communication, but the product is right now produced but not released yet. Probably they will have a new commercial for it. After I finish this product, I know to e-commerce students, by the way. So, I hope you try it, but sometimes it's risky, that's why I didn't brought the uh, product, because probably you don't read any of these uh, on the mold, on the product itself, uh, and hope you try it as soon as possible, if it comes to Cyprus, by the way. <laughs> so, second one is communication, promotion. It is also a big deal. Uh, when you go to uh, make a promotion for um, a campaign for a brand, you need to work with too many agencies and you need to have a process just like in the production and you need to uh, have the trends on your pocket 
as I mentioned in the production uh, uh, product too. Like ATL means above the line. Above the line means uh, if it's above the line, which means that it's everything you do as a marketing uh, that consumers will see directly. Below the line is the tool that you work, but the consumers uh, see it indirectly. So ATL means the communication, TV, commercial, the radio, the digital campaign, etc. Everything is ATL in uh, our uh, terminology. We have creative agencies, digital agencies, packaging, BTI, uh, public relations, media, and events. There are too many agencies and you need to uh, collaborate them, you need to manage them simultaneously depending on the character and the things uh, that Brad wants to say. So it's a hard job and in the meantime, think about it, we set a time plan to launch a product in March, let's say, and when you committed uh, to launch in March, you, need, you have to do it because you already uh, got your CEO's approval and maximum in two months you need to start the company because you wait for a month to distribution and at the beginning of the second month you need to start uh, your campaign. It's a huge challenge if it's a big company, if it's a big product, it's a huge challenge but as you see there are too many aspects to manage in the meantime. For the brand's campaign, we do brand type tracking, technical sensories, focus groups, uh, strategic concept tests, and omnibus research. When you finish the product, uh, you start writing a concept, as I already mentioned. That concept is briefed to an agency, and that agency is making a TV commercial, TV ad for you, uh, which is going to promote your product to the consumer. So it has to be holistic. It has to be connected and it has to be, uh, it has to make sense to consumer in every step. Of course, sometimes we make mistakes or our predictions, our projections are not fit to the market, but we need to validate it in the uh, most sense every time. So these kind of uh, methodologies help us to find out what to do. In the meantime, Again, in the uh, trend section, like portals, conlines, work, minta, contagious, these are uh, trend pages uh, which are helping us to find out about marketing campaign, uh, to figure out how to do a marketing campaign. So this is just a small example. I'm not going to go through uh, the whole of them. But when, you, when I mentioned about 360 degree campaign, this is something like that. We, I don't know if you see this product's commercial, it's just launched like two, three months ago. I hope you tried it, if you tried it, I hope you liked it. So this is a kind of 360 degree campaign. This is the exact slide that we showed to our CEO before. And we want Metro brand to be the ultimate the number one energy uh, brand of the snacking category in chocolate. And this is how we are planning to do it disruptive digital campaign, a new TV campaign, we ch change the form of the logo of the brand and outdoor events, sponsorships, BTL campaigns and supportive products in the year uh, for the brand itself. So sales channels uh, management is like place. This is kind of an executional thing but you need to plan it appropriately because if you don't, then people cannot see your product in the shelf and even if you do the world's best commercial, world's best TV campaign, if, you don't, if they don't find your product in the shelf, it doesn't mean anything. I mean, the shelf does not mean the shelf itself, of course, the, in the market, you need to manage each step uh, properly. That's why we start with the channel management uh, according to the price, the product format, uh, the consumer target group, we choose a primary uh, sales channel. Uh, in Turkey, it's usually a traditional channel, but if it's a product like I'll show you for Dido, the big one, of course it's going to be in the huge markets. We cannot sell it in the uh, grocery stores or small stores because its price is too much.